homeowners associations across the U.S. will certainly differ, but generally speaking, their main reason to exist is to protect property values. This is, after all, one of the single largest investments you'll ever make in your life. For whatever reason, some people don't think amateur radio antennas look great. My flagpole mast antenna is a fantastic addition to my backyard. But what do you do if you live in an area where people can see just about everything you do and your neighborhood has requirements that basically say you can't put up an antenna? They're concerned about the way things appear. Well, what about if your antenna disappears? What options do you have? And what if this disappearing antenna gave you great propagation results like this whisper map from the off center fed dipole I installed on the ridge vent of my roof? Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4BMG, HOA HIM. That's right, I live in a homeowners association. I exist for you. Not existentially, don't get ahead of yourself. I mean, my channel, it exists for those who are stuck in an HOA and don't wanna run like a frightened child. Maybe you don't have an option. Maybe because of where you're employed, you live in an area like I do in Tampa Bay where I couldn't find a home that doesn't have a homeowners association if I wanted to. What do I do about that? I find ways to follow the spirit of the rules while still operating amateur radio. And I'm gonna share one of those ideas with you today. For my test, I'm using an off-center fed dipole from Chameleon Antenna. You can use anybody's off-center fed dipole. You can make your own. I don't intend to leave this up long-term. This is just an illustration for you of something you could potentially do. But before I put this up on my ridge vent, attaching the wire with zip ties so that it just disappears, I'm weatherproofing this. It's going to be up there getting some rain on it in some storms and I don't want water in my coax. That's just going to mess with my SWR. And the SWR is going to be challenging enough. You're going to understand that here as we go. I would do some additional weatherproofing if I was leaving this up long-term here in the abusive Tampa Bay weather. I did a review on this antenna several months back. It's a very good performing, low noise, low SWR antenna that I was extraordinarily happy with. It's a great antenna for portable operations or backyard portable. But what I'm doing here is not at all textbook. I'm not installing this the way you should install an off center fed dipole. Now, don't be cavalier about your antenna installation. Always install the best antenna you can afford, whether it's commercially purchased or home brewed, and set it up the way that it's supposed to be at the proper height, the proper elevation, the proper angles. Just do it the way the manufacturer recommends or the textbooks do so you get the maximum performance. But what do you do when you can't put this up in the backyard because people will notice it. Can you put it on your roof in a non-standard configuration, non-textbook, and will it work? We're gonna find out. If you've watched any of my videos, you know by now I am a pretty skilled handyman. That's because I'm a registered handyman service in the Tampa Bay area. I've been in construction all my life. I know what to do on a roof. I'm qualified, I'm registered. Don't get on your roof. Hire someone that's a licensed insured professional. What I'm doing right now is laying out the wire, the ridge to the right on the picture, that would be over my garage. And you, if you were looking at me like you are right now, you're on the far end, the longest end. So the long wire is going to be from me to you, and the short wire is going to be from me to the right to the end of the garage. Right where I'm standing is where I'm going to be attaching the feed point. As you're watching me lay out this wire, you're struggling to see it once it leaves my hand. And that's what you wanna do. Before you send your contractor on the roof to do this installation for you, you need to choose a wire that's durable and that disappears with the color of your roof. Then all you need to do is figure out how to hide that coax. I didn't pay close attention to that just simply because this is not a permanent installation for me. You're going to need to think through that, how you get that over the edge of your roof and make it look like a normal utility installation. Here I'm just attaching each wire to the feed point and then I'm going to take that back to the location where I'm going to permanently affix it. I don't know construction in your area, here in the Tampa Bay area and in many areas of the country, this polymer ridge vent goes over top of the peak of the roof and allows for ventilation. Shingles get placed over top of it, but here on this very edge, there are perforated openings and that's where I attach the wire using zip ties. I'll show you a close up of that in just a minute. Okay, you have the idea, let's speed things up to get this installation done and not waste your time. 
I do want to state because this antenna is not being installed in the configuration at the height that a off center fed dipole should be. This antenna does not operate exactly as it should be. It's not as resonant as you would expect for a quote resonant antenna. And it's a little bit noisier than you would expect for a wire antenna. It's close to the ground, probably about 12 to 15 feet in the air, and it's just laid out in the wrong configuration. There's no way this should work, but it does. My two wires are temporarily attached. Remember, this is a temporary antenna for me. My feed point is in place, and this is just a close-up of how I stick that zip tie through the ridge vent and loosely affix my wire. If you don't have a ridge vent, maybe your contractor can come up with an alternate way for you to attach your antenna wire. The short end of the off-center fed dipole attaches over top of the garage, goes back to where the two ridge peaks meet. That's where the feed point is for the antenna. The long wire extends across the longest ridge of the house. There's about six or seven feet of wire that is just too long because my peak is too short. And that six or seven feet of wire just drapes down the slope of the roof. It's a non-standard installation. It's what I could do. Does it work? Getting a look at SWR, we're okay on 40 meters as we get to 7.300. We'd probably want to hit the tune button. Here on 20 meters, again, it's okay. I mean, you might expect something a little better on a resonant antenna. Again, remember, because this antenna isn't installed at the height and configuration that it was designed for, things are just a little bit strange. And as we get on over to 10 meters, this is where it really goes south on us, and we would definitely need to use our tuner. So yes, if you're going to install an antenna like this in a non-standard configuration, you might actually need to hit the tune button, but it does get you some contact, so we can live with that. And then here on six meters is probably the best reading that we have. We're going to get a look at uh, just listening on 40 meters. This was early in the evening, so there wasn't a lot of traffic yet. Propagation wasn't that great for me here in Tampa Bay. Two quick QSOs on 20 meters, so you can hear the quality uh, of the uh, sound that I'm picking up. It is a noisy antenna, again, because of the non-standard configuration. But again, if this is all you can do, it's fantastic if this is all you can do. And then finally, we'll look at those whisper maps that are quite impressive for the way that I installed this antenna. I don't do digital beyond whisper. Whisper is something that I'm just learning now. So for me, this works great at, what, 200 milliwatts? 0.2 watts. So I'd be careful about running a lot of power on digital here since it's actually touching my roof shingles, but perhaps some other digital modes, you could do some pretty good uh, reception and contacts. That'll give you my concluding thoughts. I'm up here in Georgia, Lake Park and Valdos, Georgia, that area. Oh, that cost me a fortune. I'll just go have you know, one of my boys I got an air conditioner on my camper, and it's starting to make noise. I think it's the fan motor. The Alpha 4 Bravo Romeo is today calling the EQ. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Kilo Delta 4. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Uh, good evening, you are 5959 five here in Southern Maryland. QSL, you're 5757 into Tampa, Florida. Kilo, come here, Whiskey 3, Alpha Whiskey O. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. I got you, 5-9. You are 5757, Tampa, Florida. I copy, 57, Tampa, Florida. Thank you very much, Ron. 7-3. 7-3, have a blast. I ran my whisper transmitter for 16 hours straight, late in the afternoon through the night into the morning. And here we have all three bands, 40, 20, and 10. Hardly a compromised antenna. On 40 meters by itself, it's still looking quite respectable. Several contacts over into Europe. 20 meters is just fantastic. And 10 is equally fantastic. An awful lot of contacts over into Europe. So what's my thought? on installing this off center fed dipole on the ridge of your roof. You do this when you have to, and that's the only time you do something like that. Some of us just don't want to leave our homeowners associations. We think the conveniences that we get are worth some of the hassle that we put up with. 
I also look at the HOA as a great place to learn how to install antennas in less than ideal circumstances, which is what you would have to do in an emergency situation. And that's why I say I don't run like a frightened child when it comes to the challenges of operating here with these restrictions. I figure out ways to deal with it. So I'm hoping you're finding this useful. These are just my ideas. Use them as a springboard to create something that's better for you to get on the air. I'll talk to you soon, friend. 73.